Hello! Welcome to episode 3 of the Bare Bones mini-series. The past two weeks we've been talking about how to use scenes and sequels to really level up your story. You can find those videos right here. Today we're gonna go even more in depth and look at something <laughs> really nitpicky and very specific, very formulaic, and very, very helpful. What I'm about to show you makes a big difference in your novel and <laughs> we're basically breaking down your story to the seconds. If you've ever played a D&D, every single turn in a Dungeons and Dragons like campaign is six seconds long. It's like that. We're breaking down your book into increments of seconds to really help it play out how the events would actually play out in a person's head, how it would actually be if it were happening in real life. So in order to do that, in order to really break down your story to the smallest unit possible and tune in on those fine motor movements, we have to use what's called an MRU, otherwise known as a motivation reaction unit. Before we go on to talk about motivation reaction units, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I come out with new writing videos every single Tuesday. I also post writing tips and advice on my Instagram, which is at Natalie C. Writing. And I currently have a poetry book called Bones and Other Splintered Things available on Amazon. So there's all the promo for you. Now that we're done with that, let's get into MRUs. An MRU always starts with a motivation. Hence why it's called a motivation reaction unit. In the motivation part of the MRU, something happens to the character. For example, they accidentally start a fire in the kitchen. In the next part of the motivation, the character takes in the information via their five senses. I'm not personally huge on, on flowery, lovely descriptions, but if you are, this is a great place for those. You're gonna use, you know, sight, smell, taste, everything, to really show how this character is perceiving this moment. So for example, they hear the crackling, they see the flames, they smell the fire, they feel the heat. Next we have reaction. Here's where it gets fun. So the reaction plays out like this. Mental response, then physical response, and then lastly, speech. So let's break down the mental response first. The first part of a mental response is a feeling. But feeling can really be conveyed through any involuntary response. So for example, if someone punches you and you go, oh, that's a feeling. You're gasping, it's a physical movement, but it portrays a feeling of like surprise or maybe pain, right? So feeling can be registered mentally, but you can also really show, this is a great way to show, not tell what your character is feeling by using an involuntary physical response or even an involuntary mental response. So for example, these could be things like in response to the fire, the character screams, starts to panic, gasps, struggles to breathe, or claps their hand over their mouth. The second part of a mental reaction is thought. This is where your character solves the problem or addresses the motivation, right? This part is fun because it's basically a mini sequel. If you haven't watched the video on sequels, again, right there. This part of the MRU is basically a sequel on an atomic level. So first, your character is gonna add the new information to the old information. So for example, the character remembers what their dad told them to do, which is smother the fire. So basically, they bring in the new information. It goes through the lens of their point of view, which I have a very fun video coming up on point of view very soon, but everything that your character takes in comes through this lens, right? So basically adding new info to old info is just the information passing through that lens and the character relating it to what they already know and what they've learned in the past. This is a great place to insert backstory without info dumping. That's the best secret that I have for inserting backstory and really helping your readers understand your characters. When they are t saying, oh, here's this new information, here's how it relates to my past, yeah, put some backstory in there if you want. After adding the new information to what they already know, they're going to analyze the new information. For example, search for a way to use dad's advice. Once they've actually taken in the information, they can go on to then dissect it. They can't really do everything at once. They can't process the information and use it at the same time. So in this step, we are using it. In the last step, the character reaches a conclusion and they find a way to solve the problem. For example, the character decides to smother the fire with a nearby towel. So like I said, mini sequel, the character has a reaction, a dilemma, and a decision. Next, physical reaction. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically just where your character acts on the decision that they made at the end of their mental process. So they take physical action. For example, the character rushes forward, grabs the towel, runs the towel underwater and wrings it out and throws the towel on the fire. Lastly, speech also self-explanatory. For example, in this scenario, the character shouts for their friend to check on the rest of the food or maybe asks for help. Okay, so there are the components and setup of an MRU. 
This process is the same process every single human goes through when they take in a motivation. That's why it makes your book feel so natural because every single human brain will first jump into mentally processing the motivation, physically acting, and lastly, speaking. So that's why the order is so important. That's why it works. Okay, so now that we've gone over the basic components and setup of an MRU, I wanna show you a few of the very common pitfalls that most authors, beginners or not, fall into when it comes to their MRUs. The first one I see very often, and I also fall victim to very often, and it is skipping components. Here's how it sounds in writing. I pause. What does that smell? Is that fire? Glancing over my shoulder, I gasp. Oh my god. I need to smother it. I grab the green dish towel on the counter and get it wet, then throw it over the flames. The fire sizzles. Anna, your food is on fire. Okay. What happens in this MRU is almost nothing. The MRU feels thin, the characters feel underdeveloped. You have the whole like talking heads phenomenon where your reader basically just sees your characters' heads and doesn't know where they are in relation to anything else or to each other, and they're just like there. They just exist. But there's nothing grounding them. There's no scene around them. And I like to call this a white scene because it's a scene with blanks. When I write a scene with underdeveloped MRUs, there are blanks. I just see mostly white things. Like I don't really, I can't picture it very well. It's hard to imagine and get in touch with and put myself there and the goal of writing is to immerse your reader in senses and emotion and this MRU does not do that. So how do you solve this problem? You don't skip components, <laughs> but you also don't want to include every single component, at least not every time, because that is problem number two. I pause. What does that smell? Is that fire? Glancing over my shoulder, I gasp at the billowing crackling flames. They're so hot I can feel them on my face. Oh my God, Anna left her food on the stove for too long. I can't believe her. When I was in eighth grade, dad taught me how to put out a fire after he set the grill ablaze on accident. And thank God for that, because otherwise my apartment would probably burn down right now. I need to smother the flames. I grab the green dish towel on the counter and run it under the faucets pouring water. Then I turn and throw it over the flames. The fire sizzles. Anna, I say, stepping away from the heat. Your food is on fire. Okay, so what happens in the problem two MRU, the every component, every time MRU, is something that I like to call the Robert Jordan effect. Because I have heard from many people that Robert Jordan's books are exhausting to read, that they take forever, that he spends 12 pages on one minute, as they like to put it. That's what happens if you use every single component every single time in your MRUs. The book will be huge. There's too much detail for readers to care, and it, it feels mechanical. There's not enough character in it. There's not enough emotion in it. It's very much like, go, go, go. Here's the formula. I know exactly what to put here. And all I need to do is put exactly what is in the MRU and then I'm good. And therefore there's no flexibility with the components. A really good MRU plays with how much of each component is there. And you'll see that later in the video. It's not only about balancing how many components you include. It's also about balancing which ones you decide to emphasize. And depending on the character, those might be different. That's why it's so important to know your character because all of these like problem MRUs are gonna make your characters feel underdeveloped. And lastly, this MRU will give your reader and you major fatigue. It's exhausting to write, it's exhausting to read. It's too much, it's too much. There can't constantly be that much input to your reader. You have to really know where to pull your reader's attention because they're not gonna be able to pay attention to everything. They just aren't. Okay, the last very common problem in an MRU is when the components are out of order. I pause. Something's on fire. Oh my God, Anna must have left her food on the stove too long. I glance over my shoulder at the billowing, crackling flames. This is what I get for living with roommates. I grab the green dish towel on the counter and run it under the faucets pouring water. I need to smother the fire. Thank God dad taught me that. When I was in eighth grade, he set the grill ablaze on accident. Anna, your food is on fire. The fire sizzles when I turn and throw the towel over the flames. Um, how does that feel to you? This and the skipping components one are probably my least favorite, but this like takes the cake on being just like irritated with what I read because it, creates so many issues. What happens? Who knows? First of all, characters can see the future in this MRU. There's a couple of examples in this little excerpt. I pause. Something is on fire. How do you know? Can you smell it? Can you hear it? You just know? You just can tell, like you're psychic. Something is on fire, I just know it. No, show us why you know that. The next example of this is the fire sizzles when I turn and throw the towel over the flames. So we see the fire sizzling before we see what causes the fire to sizzle. That's wrong. <laughs> your whole entire book, this is why scenes and sequels are so helpful, is why MRUs are so helpful. Your entire book, whether it's on a big level or a small level, is a domino effect. 
a chain of events. Each event creates the next event. That's when you know you're reading a really good story, is when you can trace everything that happened all the way to the beginning and see, oh, yeah, that character made a decision every time and created every single scenario that they were in, right? So when you can't do that, it's very disorienting. Your character's actions also don't make sense because we don't get to see their mental process. We don't get to see what information they're putting together, how they're relating what's happening to what's happened to them before. We don't get to see their emotions. We don't get to see the reasons why they're <laughs> making this decision. Like, we're very out of touch with our character. We don't know why they're acting the way they are, which means that the character feels underdeveloped again. And lastly, reader whiplash. This example, when you're reading it, feels like you were at the circus and there's like acrobats and clowns and something over here and something over there and you're like trying to look at all of it and you just can't. Or like in a movie scene when there's like things going on in every single piece of the screen you just have to pick something to watch. Your reader will get whiplash reading this MRU because they will start going down the direction of, oh this character is perceiving this information and suddenly it'll be like, nope they're acting with no real connection or like transition. It just feels really unnatural and everything is unexplained. And the the last thing you want for your readers to be is confused because anything that confuses your reader will make them pause and step back from the story to understand. You just want everything to flow so easily that they forget their reading. They forget their brain is working to understand this novel because it's not really like it is, but at the same time, like you're spoon feeding it just enough that they don't have to do the heavy lifting to understand what's going on. They can piece together some clues or stuff like that, but they don't actively work to understand your characters or your scenes. Okay, now that we have all of the problems out of the way, let's take a look at a well-developed in-order MRU. Let's see how it feels. I pause. What does that smell? Is that fire? I glance over my shoulder and the heat washes over my face. Oh my God, the crackling flames are reaching for the ceiling. My plate slips out of my hands and into the sink with a clang. I jump. Okay, think, May. You know what to do. I have to smother it. Dad taught me that when I was in eighth grade and he set the grill ablaze on accident. And when my attention wandered, he said, you need to remember these things, May, and wave me closer to the fire. And thank God for that, because otherwise my apartment would probably burn down right now. With shaking hands, I wet the green dish towel and steal myself. Then I turn and throw it over the flames. The fire sizzles. Anna! I put my hands on my head, drawing in a deep breath. Your food is on fire. Ta-da. So, you might have noticed that MRU is longer than the Problem 2 MRU with every component every time. And the reason is, I decided to mess a little bit with the fluidity of the MRU to show you what can happen when you emphasize certain parts. So for this scene, I really wanted to make you feel more grounded to the character and give you a little bit of insight into her past. As I said, the part of the mental reaction where they're taking new information and relating it to old is the best place to insert backstory. And so I wanted to do that here. So that's why it's a little longer. It has most parts of the MRU, but again, when you play with that balance, it feels much more natural. It feels much more grounded. The character is present. The character is making decisions. You're in their head. You're seeing what's going on. The MRU is like a huge, secret weapon. Now, a little disclaimer about the MRU. I don't want you to think about it while you're writing. I need you to wait until you are in the editing process of your novel to start thinking about the MRU and start applying the MRU. Because if you sit down with the MRU, like if you write out MRU steps and you put it as a sticky note on your computer and you look at it and you stare at it and you use it while you're writing, you're gonna be tired. You're gonna be tired. Just follow your gut on what you think needs to be in there and when you think it needs to be there and go back in later. The MRU is a fantastic editing tool. It's really in-depth and very nitpicky and that's why it should only be an editing tool because the writing process doesn't need to be nitpicky. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be there. And then once you're done, you can go in with something that's really going to fine-tune everything, right? It's like a prototype versus like the end product type thing. So please wait to use the MRU till you are in editing stages of your novel. But when you do use it, I hope it helps you because it helps me a lot and it's one of my favorite things ever. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy trails.